situated at a height of 1500 meters, the hill station of Shillong is the capital of Meghalaya. organization was founded in Shillong a century ago in 1899. The Seng Khasi was a cultural movement that sought to rekindle the pride of the Khasi nation, a highland people subjugated both politically and culturally by the brute force of a European invader. father also was very much involved in Sankasi because he gave he was the spirit behind it because he always wanted the culture also to remain because he doesn't want because he had seen that it's eroding like that and so when they started Sankasi was very much behind and because of Sankasi our culture our dances our this Khasi music and all were happy they will to survive up to now See, otherwise we would have all vanished long time ago. Though Sweetie Mon Savian leads a semi-retired life, this granddaughter of Khasi pioneer Babu Jibonroy is still an active participant in various social and intellectual efforts aimed at benefiting Shillong society. It was in the days of the Raj and in particular during the early years of the 20th century that the city of Shillong experienced its golden era. Many a building and institution of that era still survive, testimonies to the passage of history and to a forgotten pace of life. Under British rule, the political importance of the city in the colonial scheme of things ensured that people from different parts of eastern India made a beeline for Shillong. This is the nerve center of Shillong, the Bara Bazaar. It is the women who traditionally form the bulk of the shop owners in Bara Bazaar, as elsewhere in Meghale, a reminder of the matrilineal nature of Khasi society. These are the women of Shillong who run their business, even as they do their homes. And it is their name that their children take, even as property and family responsibility pass from the mother to the daughter. In the days of the Raj, the city of Shillong was an important center of business and government. And the multi-ethnic city of Shillong stems from the fact that when the rest of what today is northeastern India were wide wilderness, Shillong was already an administrative center and the political capital of the composite state of Assam. The city became home to people from all walks of life, and even the royalty from neighboring kingdoms had set up their own palaces overlooking the Shillong of the commoners. No longer kings and princesses, some of them had stayed back even after the Union Jack had departed these shores. Though ensconced in their royal retreats, they are today very much a part of modern Shillong. 